leaves will be red and gold before they touch the ground. Before they touch the ground, my dears, before they touch the ground, a long and lonely winter will be here. The traveler has left the road so very long and still. The sun will wake the winter through. Dance of the seasons goes round and round. As the 
time for all nature to rest when the green summer pastures have faded to brown and the forest with color is blessed we'll waltz into winter the autumn and i in a flurry of russet and gold and we'll swirl with the snowflakes falling down from the sky Outside of Woodstock, New York, last night. They have hippies there. <laughs> uh, but one of the people in the front row um, is a uh, dear friend of, uh, dear old friend of both Archie and I, uh, Priscilla Herdman. And uh, lovely, lovely singer. An extraordinary, sweet human being. And uh, it's always nice to have someone like that in the front row, but it's also intimidating. Uh, and, I mean, there were people like Happy Trom in the audience. And, and I've got to sit next to Archie as he plays guitar every night anyway, so that's hard enough. Uh, it's just, anyway, it was, it was, I had a bad night. It was. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I was, it was Priscilla Herdman first put me on to the poetry of Henry, Henry Lawson. And, uh, uh, I, I took to it right away, so much to the point that when I started writing my own songs, I was cred crediting them to him. Uh, just I figured if, if my own, if, if, if people didn't like my songs, I could at least blame this dead guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, mm -hmm. so this is a, this is one of Henry Lawson's poems that I set to music, and um, he was kind of he was he was a tragic figure. Um, drank too much, he uh, fell in love with the wrong woman, uh, carried a torch for her for most of his life, and uh, followed her over to England from Australia. Uh, she was married to someone else. It, uh, he couldn't persuade her back to his side, so he went back to Australia and, and uh, drank himself to death. And uh, I, you know, I think he was kind of the, probably the archetype of the first folk singer. <laughs> kind of set the mold right there. So I, I, I look on him as a hero. <laughs> of this dark night have gone from bush and town My spirit revives in the morning breeze that died when the sun went down The river is high, the stream is strong The grass is green and tall And I fain would think this world of ours is a good world
will be a song to play. Maybe I was blind. I'll keep my face to the dawning light, though the devil stand behind. Though the devil stand behind my back, till I see his shadow fall. Stars, a good word after all. Rest for your eyes, our weary love. You drove the worst away. The ghost of a man I might have been is gone from my heart today. Shadows fall. My heart grows brave in the world to me is a good world after all. My heart grows brave in the world to me is a good world. A good world after all. Downside is the guitars are. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lovely place. Uh, I don't know how this has been going on so long. I've never heard of this. <laughs> of course, we were coming out here, and Archie has his GPS with him. <laughs> she was getting a bit sniffy with us. And you know, and, and you start thinking that it's an actual real thing, uh, like an actual person talking to you, the GPS. And uh, we're getting farther and farther into the woods, and you know, and I, you know, more and more twists and turns and stuff. And it's all very lovely, and, and old growth forest, and lots of beautiful homes and stuff. And who the hell lives here? And uh, you know, you got your cocked for banjos and. Um, <laughs> And the GPS was getting, just getting more and more irritated uh, with every mile. And I finally said, you know, like, I just said to Archie, where the hell are we going? And this little voice came out of the dashboard and said, I'm taking you out here to kill you. <laughs> that was a song by uh, my friend Natalia Zuckerman. Uh, lovely. Uh, Singer-songwriter from a rather famous uh, musical family. Her father plays a bit of fiddle. Uh, <laughs> I, um, I uh, first time I ever met Natalia was about 12 years ago. She was doing an opening act for me up in Ottawa, and she just went out and just killed. I mean, she, she, you know, I hated her. She just, it was so, it was she, such a good set and huge standing ovation. And I'm standing there going, that's nice. <laughs> But she came into the dressing room and she was so sweet and I said, get out there, get out there and do another song. And she said, oh, you know, I was just so nervous my, my dad's out there. And, uh, you know, and I said, yeah, I get nervous for my parents in the audience too. Well, anyway, dad walked in and it was Pinkus Zuckerman. <laughs> so, um, yeah. She never mentioned that. And of course I started drooling all over his shoes, you know. I've got all your records. <laughs> He kept, kept backing up. <laughs> With a boat in the river, there's a storm ahead. I got a blanket and a shovel and a wooden chair. Remember that sky lit up red and green. 
fireworks scared those birds like you scared me. Never knew if I should stay or fly. frontier with England. Uh, and uh, when I moved there some 35 odd years ago, I knew there was a rich heritage of long ballads, uh, mainly about fighting our southern neighbours, uh, and also about fighting amongst themselves, because the difference between the Highlander and the Border is that the Highlander historically followed the clan allegiance, but the Borderer followed the winner. <laughs> And despite there being some really beautiful ballads and lovely fiddle tunes, very few love songs. Uh, and that was, despite a rumour also, there's a man from the town of Hoyt that he loved his wife so much he nearly told her. <laughs> I mentioned that when I was playing in New Hampshire recently. And uh, I would make them up to me after the show and said that her grandparents had emigrated from the Scottish borders. And when we got married, he said to her, Darling, I'll say this once. I love you, and if I change my mind, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> and a old border shepherd balladeer called Willie Scott explained it all to me. He said, we don't waste time singing about it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to waste some time. Your heart, and the lancers love will 
The fairest flower will fade until she shuns the looking glass. Oh, the scent in that will still the monkey born has. The tender warrior rests your head at the dying of the deer. The humble caught her feather bed on deep below the clear. I only know although my dreams the vanity of the past. The face that through the fire cleans is my body borderlands. And in that bright land beyond life's shore, our type has ceased to be. And others share forevermore each other's company. I'll search amidst the throng for you. When I hold you fast, and I will sing a song to you upon a border last. Will I be long to you upon a border last? Breton uh, when I play is that I introduced my guitar because uh, there's some very fine guitar players in Keep Breton and they do it to promote the luthiers, the people who make the guitars. This is a filed Falstaff uh, made by Roger Buckle in the Lake District in England. He made it especially for my 17th birthday and when he gave it to me he said this one will see you out. <laughs> I'm looking after it very carefully. <laughs> uh, my first real love in guitar, this is the Gibson guitar man. The first, my first real love was actually a little old Gibson from the 30s. And it's up in the loft, and now and again I pick it up, have a, put some strings on it again and play it. Then I noticed there was a set list in the guitar case, and it was a set list they used to do in the late 60s and early 70s. I could not remember any of them. <laughs> I could remember the chorus of Kumbaya. I thought it was it's one bloody word. <laughs> yeah, but you probably see it a lot of times. <laughs> oh, no, that makes it worse. Yeah. <laughs> How did you pull again? <laughs> <laughs> there was also a, a little love song that was collected in Newfoundland, but probably got there via Appalachia, and it's got a touch of Robert Burns about it as well.
just for me to blast For in your mind behold The secrets of my own true love And letters with the gold There's a lobster boiling in the pot, a bluefish on the hook, and they're suffering long, but it's nothing to like. He can be here for you, my dear. Baby. Had I bought a flask of gin, sugar here for two, a great big jar for two. I pour a drink for you, my dear baby. So fare thee well, my own true love Fare thee well, my dear The ship is awaiting and the wind blows high And I am bound away Sit here and listen to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there was a. I only found this up later after the event, but uh, apparently there's a. a excuse me. Yes. <laughs> there's that moment when you know you really are getting older. It's that first moment, and some of you may know this one already, when you put your glasses on to eat your dinner. <laughs> So Archie and I, we use these, these little tuners, they're called snark tuners, and they're, they, they, you know, they're nice, they, you can, you, but I can't read the damn thing <laughs> without my glasses. I, I took like two years to try to find a watch that I could read without, you know, put it, putting it on, over on the desk. <laughs> I finally found this one, it's a World War II Swiss watch that apparently was uh, adopted by the Luftwaffe. <laughs> I showed it to my auntie who was uh, in England during the height of the Battle of Britain and she said, so this is a German pilot's watch? And I said, well, it could have been. She's looking at it rather minutely and I said, what are you looking for? And she said, oh, she still holds a grudge. Uh, she said, uh, well, I was hoping to maybe see some blood stains." <laughs> uh, I know, well. Um, where was I going with it? Oh, anyway. <laughs> You'll have to forgive me, I'm on painkillers. Uh, it's, it's a choice between just enjoying the painkillers or actually trying to do my job. <laughs> there was a time when I thought I could do both, but I realized it's not. Anyway, um, now there's an old expression, I guess, or an old saying, that uh, the two happiest days in a boat owner's life uh, are the day that you buy the boat and the day you sell it. <laughs> uh, I can tell you right now that the latter part of that was not true for me. I bought this beautiful old 1957 Lyman uh, 17 uh, a couple of years ago. It was just the most beautiful thing. It had the original Evinrude motor, 1957 Evinrude, uh, 35 horsepower, big twin. Not that I care a, a toss about motors, but it, the boat itself was this gorgeous lap strake hull, all clinker built mahogany inside and it just looked like a swan on the water. It was so beautiful. It smelled incredible and, and it just made my heart swell every time I looked at it and, and you know you just touched the starter button it would roar into life as long as it was as it was in the mechanic's backyard. <laughs> <laughs> my backyard not so much. In the water not at all. <laughs> So it hurt to say goodbye to it. <laughs> so this song came out of it anyway. Slim <laughs> 
churches on the river bay All dressed in white and gold Windows from the northwest now The day is turning cold The soul boasts the ghost of summer's past And the river smells like rain Once more now to the west, to the sun again. And our days are growing shorter, our nights are closing in. Shadows fall Hear the wild geese cry And it seems our times have found us love Our times we could not shame Brought us care and stripped us bare Left us trembling in their way. I can see the light beyond these hills where the sun slips to the south. Warm bed waits in firelight and the sweetness of your mouth. strictly monogamous in terms of guitars, so I, I'm just using two on this trip. I usually have six or seven up on here with me, and they're all pretty much Gibsons. Uh, I kind of like them. I like the way they, they look and they sound. Um, both these guitars are from uh, the 40s, um, around in the time when uh, America entered the war. Uh, Gibson uh, put a, a flyer out, they sent a message out to all their uh, Distributors and they said that we, uh, for the duration of the second of, of this war, we will not be uh, making any more guitars. We will be devoting all our uh, all our, our manpower and materiel to uh, the war effort. And I know we've all seen those incredibly inspiring uh, that, that footage of the those fantastic rosewood and spruce Gibson tanks going up the beach, <laughs> <laughs> bloody Omaha, and uh, very inspiring. Um,
What nice colors. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, as it turned out, uh, uh, Gibson uh, uh, produced 20,000 guitars uh, during the Second World War, and they were all made by the women uh, of Kalamazoo. They all stepped into the breach, and uh, so these are Rosie the Riveter guitars. <laughs> this one here has a bit of a history to it. So I'd like to know where it came from. Is it? It's either a, someone took a pencil, a pencil or a knife or something, and scratched in a face onto the <laughs> front of it. And it's either uh, Jesus or Charles Manson. I'm not, <laughs> I made up my mind entirely on that. But. Crocus raises up a fragile heap in the snow beneath the tree. When it was so hard this year, you swore it would never leave. But now the rain soaks in the garden, sweet scent upon the breeze. Open up your window. Breathe it in. Oh, it's funny how it happens. It's a mystery to me. It's passed you by so many times now. You might think it's just not to be. Then love is standing right beside you If you would have the eyes to see Open up your heart Let her in She's the one whose touch will heal you She's the one who'll guard your heart She's the only one who got the joke. Hell, she got you right from the start. She's the one who loves you for yourself, completely within your skin. So open up your heart. Let her in. Across the middle, bow their heads against the storm. The clouds are racing gray and low. This rain is sweet and warm. And this first day of spring is fading fast. By the bed, the light is dim. Open up your arms, take her in. This first day of spring is fitting fast. By the bed, the light is dim. Open up your arms, take her in. child was born, you had to be very careful that the uh, fairies didn't come and take it away. And what they would do uh, was make it into a changeling, a shape-shifting, and it would be either a bird or an animal, or if you're really unlucky, a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> and there are sort of supposedly reports of this happening, especially in this ballad. <clears throat> the Lord of the May estate is right out in Sutherland, in the far north of Scotland and they've got not much to do there except look for fairies.
Reedy beware of the hunting young man, Reedy beware of the hunting young man. But the Lord of the day has sought of her eye and dark her away with a favourite little tear. Reedy beware of the hunting young man. If 
have a dream, if you have a dream, oh, it comes true, I hope it comes true, as part of the scheme, as part of the scheme, that's the way for you, that's the way for you, have a fear, if you have a fear, tickets uh and it's just this i charm my way out of them i was i was talking about on the radio one time in canada on a national radio show and you know you just you pull over very quietly and calmly and i was telling this woman about the the, the host about uh, she said well how do you avoid speeding tickets and i said well i drive a stealth volvo and she said well, what's that and i said well it's just a volvo wagon but nobody believes it can do over the speed limit you know cause it's such a clapped out looking old thing <laughs> So, and I said, besides that, if I do get pulled over, I just, you know, I pull over, I roll down the windows, I turn the car off, I put the keys on the roof, I put the dome light on so they can see inside, and I have all my paperwork, and I'm just sitting there like a good citizen, so and they'll usually let you off or knock a few miles per hour off your fine. So, a couple of weeks later, I'm in Nelson, British Columbia, and I, I realized I had a gig that night I'd forgotten about, so I just jumped in the car and I went roaring off out of town, I just got about a mile and a half out of town, Mounted police came over. It was weren't on horses. It was a police car. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> after him, man. Anyway, um, <laughs> tally ho. Um, anyway, they pulled me over, and I did the whole thing. You know, you pull over and roll the window down, turn the car off, and throw the keys on the roof. And I got my stuff. And I, all I could see was his belt. <laughs> it's just, you know, this black belt, you know, and it's got, it's got the gun, and it's got the mace, it's got the, 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 the sap, and it's got the, the baton, and, you know, the hand, you know, nine kinds of handcuffs. It's, 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 it wasn't like talking to a human being, it was like going through the takeout window at a Fifty Shades of Grey restaurant. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, so I handed him my stuff, and he, and he said, Garner Rogers, huh? This must be the stealth fall vault. <laughs> he came back 10 minutes later with a $240 ticket. He, said, he leaned in, he said, I don't think you're going to charm your way out of this. <laughs> well, I got a request for the song, and, and then uh, a minute or so later, I was talking to a lady who's uh, friends with the person for whom I wrote this. Uh, so it's kind of kismet. Who can tell when in love you'll finally fall? Some live in vain, never love at all. As lightning strikes. 
strikes as a small, insistent voice. If we are blessed, we will hear and heed the call. Change your chorus. Give your love, never count the cost. Lose your heart and never call it loss. May your love be your shelter to the ending of your Love is all that is, all that ever was. So may your love grow strong and always kind. May your hearts grow forevermore entwined in the brightest day or in the stillness of the night. Her ears before the hammer fell. She was mine, my friend. 
turn around to me. You're soft headed, I'll tell. But she's been shot from the little post that I know he's at her best. Are they used to her up there on her drive? I think she learned the rest. So if she does not but in her days need some shady tree. I'll have saved her from the knacker's yard. That's enough for me. Song, so I call them clinics. <laughs> and if you've got a song that's busted, bring it on and I'll try and fix it. <laughs> and uh, I was doing the Godrich Festival in Ontario, the songwriting clinic there, and I was trying to explain that, you know, if you read poetry, you'll notice there's a lot of alliteration and internal assonance, internal rhyming. And uh, this wasn't getting through to them, so I decided I should have to write a song with a lot of alliteration and the Lord of Eternal Acidence. And this weather has reminded me of it. I went to my wardrobe once because uh, Stephanie and I were going to a very posh do, and I looked in there and there was nothing there but down jackets, <laughs> flannel shirts, Gore-Tex. <coughs> All the clothes I have are geared for winter. Don't put me, I'm ready for the storm Standing in the eye, beneath the leaden sky I'll be all safe and dry and warm All my clothes are lined and made of leather All my boots are waxed and watertight And I can pull my cap bring down to face a clammy weather Tires to face the ice and snow, and if I hit a drift, I can lock the diff, and I'll make a diff and take it nice and slow. I've got stacks of logs and loads of kindling, propane gas and candles by the score. I could face an ice age if the ozone layer keeps dwindling. I got polar bears and all the but my weather girl keeps telling me the sun's gonna shine. There's bees on the blossom and the grapes on the vine. So I think I'll take a trip to North Alaska. But the climate can be poor that time of year. So I'm gonna phone my weather girl, and this is what I'm asking. Promise me the weather is severe. 
monsoon season can so so excite. I don't know why that works. <laughs> I've never seen a typhoon in full flow. I will fry when I'll survive the thundering and the light with my cortex on ready to it a go. But my weather girl keeps telling me the sun's gonna shine. There's bees on the blossom and there's grapes on the vine. So I'll strip down to just the beer essentials. Harry Hansen, Long John's, and a vest. But I'll keep my hat like that's too cool Because it's sentimental It is hard, but I will try to do my best Yes, I'll submit to barometric pressure <laughs> I'll admit the glass is set to fair But I'll keep my hot face handy For all the bees that get fresher Says the touch of frost is in the air But my weather girl keeps telling me The sun is going to shine on the blossom and the grapes on the vine and all the clothes I have are geared for winter <laughs> back and ran into an old buddy I haven't seen for a while. Back in the 60s and 70s he was the lad who wrote most of our marching songs and protest songs at the time. He said he was still writing but uh, mainly love songs and he gave me some very sound advice. He said if you do write love songs make sure your wife recognizes herself in at least one of them. <laughs> so he told me this is the one he wrote for his wife. Got a nice gentle chorus, with lots of harmonies hidden away. I've never found a river like you before, a river I could cross. You weren't marked in the maps I had, I think I could be lost. I never found a river like you before, I never found. I never found a river like you before You run too deep to wade You flow too fast, you swim against You pull so cool in the shade I never found a river like you before I never found a river like you I found a river that flows the deep as you I found a river that flows I never found a river like you before You make me listen and talk and sing Think and feel and give and take I know they could be the same thing I never found a river like you before I never found a river like you I never found a river like you before I've been living half alive Nothing that ever washed over me Could make me feel so low or high I never found a river like you before I never found a river like you I found a river that flows deep as you I never found a river that flows deep as you I never found a river like you before You shut the sun in my eyes I dance with you all the way down to the sea To find a true love and a prize. I never found a river like you before I never found a river like you I never found a river that flows I found a river that flows
tumbling clouds Road is dark and wet Silent forest to the right of me Cold water to my left Cold water dark and restless
wrote that song with a little house I have up in Nova Scotia. And uh, first morning I sang it was at a little festival and a lady got up in the middle of a crowd and I was just handing it off to the next person. It was a workshop, songwriting workshop and I finished the song, it was brand new. This lady stood up and said, Mr. Rogers, I said, yes. She said, I just want to thank you on behalf of all the women here today for being willing to at least look for the sweet spot. <laughs> Every guy in the place is glaring daggers at me. And I found out later on from one of the volunteers that there was a run on flashlight batteries in the tent city. I like to think I did some good. <laughs> That's a song I wrote for Bill Morrissey. Still kind of miss him every day. You know, a lot of us do. I don't really endorse the vision of the afterlife that's portrayed in this song. But uh, it'd be nice to think he's on some other plane, astral plane. When you get there, I know you'll go. There's just a couple of things you'll need to know. You got a big old gate, that's just for sure. They've been waiting on you forever. There's a house. There's a good old car, still starts with ease. Just pull down the visor, you'll find the keys. Anytime you need to go. And there's a split cane rod with two pound test. There's an old felt hat you like the best. There's a book of flies in a canvas bed. In the hallway by the door. And there's a river deep and cool. Lots of shade and shells of gold. Those damn trout, they still make you look a fool. There's just so much even God can do. There's lots of shows to do in these little towns. The good people come from miles around. They got some kind of genius up there. He does the sound. They always pay in cash. <laughs> Sounds better all the time. Brand new strings on your old guitar. There's a dark eyed girl sitting at the bar. That charm of yours is gonna take you far. You might just win her with your sweet. Sweet smile. Mm -hmm. on the water. 
to me to go and live in the borderlands was the, the character of the people. They're very generous. Uh, there's a great levity, uh, although there are some aristocrats down there too. Uh, they're also very literal. Uh, a couple of Irish friends came over to see me. They uh, were fishermen and they wanted to see the River Tweed, which is the greatest Tweed, greatest salmon river anywhere, I think, in Europe. We couldn't afford to fish it, it's about a thousand pounds a beat or something. But uh, I live on a little back road called the Old Stagecoach Road, and there's a cycle route and there's horses go along, and there's a lot of walking route as well. Uh, but they couldn't find me, and the nearest village to me is called Fountain Hall, and they knew that. So they went into the local post office in the nearest town, Stow, and said uh, to the postmistress, Could you tell us the quickest way to Fountain Hall? She said, now you're obviously not riding horses, so are you cycling or walking? He said, no, we're driving. She said, oh, aye, that's the quickest way. So to give them directions to the River Tweed and a really nice walk, I told them, go to the town of Melrose. There's a George and Abbotsford Hotel at the bottom where you've got a really nice lunch. Go to the drop of the town to the Bridge Hotel. See, they don't use GPSs in Ireland, they navigate by pubs. <laughs> and uh, then go down to the, the banks and cross the old chain bridge. Turn to your right and walk for about a mile and a half and there's another nice pub. But they turned the wrong way. They probably had too much to drink. <laughs> Perish the thought. And uh, they were walking for miles and they couldn't see any way over the river. They couldn't see any pubs. Then they spotted a fisherman fishing at the far bank. And they shouted, hello, and he went, aye, what do you want? He said, how do you get to the other side of the river? He said, you're on the other side of the river. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it was probably the nature of the people that attracted the, the poet. <laughs> back in the days, he explained it to somebody. <laughs> back in the turn of the 19th, 20th century, a poet called Roger Quinn, he used to go down to the borderland, leaving his boring office job in Glasgow, and uh, he wrote this eulogy for that part of the world. From the moorlands and the meadows to the city of the shadows, where wonder all the lonely comes a call I understand. Two soft notes and crawling, just calling, ever calling, to the spirit of the open, the dear old motherland. This grim, huge city daunts me, its will of sorrow haunts me, a nameless figure tossed amidst the human surf that beats forever and forever, in a frenzy of endeavor. But I leave it in the morning, slip away without a warning, save a hand clasp from the friend that knows the call that leads me on. The city's clang and clatter, but no man less won't matter, and no one here will save me near, I fear that I'm gone. I can't foot I linger, it has charms the state singer, and from the bridge of painters dream of beauty there I'll see. All behind me, the purple evening shadows find me, as the vines of Cohen boards a hundred tower would be. They're driving in Melrose, 
touched by the wizard's spell rose. They were sighed and her leader foot in Elvin's fair king. Leaf serenely gliding, seen and shyly hiding. The villains raised their triple crest, sent to go the sea. Alas, the dream is over, I awake now to discover the city's rush and the bustling crowd and the din on every hand. But I hear softly falling, I can hear the curly wheels calling, and know that soon I'll see them. Stagecoach Road, then we have our horse field, then there's the Gal Watcher, and they've just opened up an old railway that's been closed since the 60s, uh, two weeks ago. And then there's the A7 Road, and then there's a hill called Clint's Hill, and on top of Clint's Hill is a derelict farmstead, and behind it is a tumble down cottage, and in the cottage there's a port. I knew there was somebody there because when I used to take the horse over that moor, I'd see a wisp of smoke now and again. And it turns out <coughs> he's quite a renowned poet in his, in his day, he was. Um, there's legends about him. But anyway, I was sitting out in the garden one day and I saw this track coming down from the, <coughs> the, the Clint's Hill with a figure on it pulling a golf trolley, which is unusual because it's a grouse moor. And I got the binoculars out and it was just your man, the poet. And he had a car and gas cylinder and a propane gas cylinder on this golf trolley. And he was about to walk four miles to the petrol station to change his gas. So I got the pickup up and went down to the main road, lifted him <coughs> and introduced myself. He said, oh, I have heard of you. Uh, do you ever do charity gigs? And I said, yeah, what's it for? He said, me. <laughs> Fair enough, what's the, what's the story? I said, I get a bit cheeky when I've had a drink and I've got some hefty police fines coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Understatement of the year. He really annoys the police, this lad. Uh, our local police constable, our community officer, community police constable is called John Lennon, which he's got to live up to that for his time. But he's also the smallest police constable in the whole of police Scotland. He's five foot two, I think, with his hands in the air. <laughs> but the poet keeps calling him a laptop because he's a small PC. <laughs> he doesn't like it. <laughs> but anyway, I got the full story and he was definitely worth a song. Very impressive looking character, about six two with a huge handlebar moustache and sideburns. I've called him Jamie to protect his identity. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, this quote I've got from my sinuses. <clears throat> and I sing through my nose most of the time anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> Jane lives at the top of the hill where the hawks and the buzzards fly. His nearest neighbour is the mountain here and he rises up to the curly sky. Old some cottage can hunkers down in the rocks and heathery grass. With a smoky fire, a paraffin lamp, and a rusty old cooker that runs on gas. And it must be cold when the north wind blows. But Jamie and I agree when the moon shines down on the winter snows. It is nearer the stars than me. Hell of a rough road leading out, but a tough open leading in. But he never notices the holes and ruts, cause that's the way James' life has been. And his old car got bogged down in the ditch, never quite made the trip. So he bought another one just the same, so that he could cannibalize and strip. If you always do with what you've got, Jamie and I agree. 
never wants for what you're not And that sounds good to me You can sometimes disagree with the law And once in a blue you will But he broke all the windows at the police station And the law disagreed with him And the judge said, Jimmy, you're an alcoholic Because you're too old to be a punk He said, no! Alcoholics, they go to meetings, not me, you're on the run, just a drunk. Now, as the old boys get in the bottle, but Jamie and I agree. But he decides to go full throat, he's a wild man to me. He was once a dandy man about town, and can still even drive. His pinstripe suit with his hair slicked down, and a handsome woman catches his eye. And he's loved and lost and he's wooed and won as he's rambled down the years With a winsome smile, a vibrant tongue and his big moustache curling round his ears The moustache I had could not compare But Jamie and I agreed that a bullshit helps with facial hair But he's got more money than me Yes, Jamie lives at the top of the hill where the hawks and the buzzards fly Last I heard he was living there still, watching the days and the clouds roll by. I wouldn't call Jamie my best friend. But there's one thing I'd guarantee, if he was dying I'd give him half the time I've left for the pleasure of his company. I tried I could not drink my fill 
I turn the glasses over Well, the days go slow The years they flee The future is not for us to see And just for tonight I'll let you be What I give to have you here with me Oh, what I give to have you That song in uh, a gunkwit, uh, Maine. Just about a half a mile from uh, where my old friend Noel Harrison used to live. Uh, my brother Stan and I. Some of you will remember Noel Harrison, the girl from Uncle. We also, yeah, he also sang "Windmills of Your Mind." My brother Stan and I were his. Uh, we were his uh, backup band for a couple of years back in the mid '70s. You probably didn't know that. <laughs> We spent a lot of time on stage doing Jacques Brel songs. <laughs> and um, he was a lovely man. Um, just a lovely, kind, sweet, generous person. And, and uh, so great to travel with. And, uh, and not just because he always picked up the check. Um, <laughs> We were sitting on a balcony one night, and we were just talking about our childhoods. And he had a more, much more interesting childhood, uh, you, you know, than any of us. But uh, for a while, he was captain of the Olympic ski team, British Olympic ski team, and you know, Rex Harrison's son. I mean, that's it's going to lead you into some adventures. He said um, he was talking about uh, he was in the four corners of hell down in uh, southern England during the Battle of Britain. And of course, the kids all treated it like a big game. You know, it was, it was like, it was as good as a movie, actually. You know, you'd be dog fights over the overhead, and you know, it's a hot metal, and you know, shell casings coming down, raining down on you, and, uh, um, and but anyway, Noel was out in the, the yard one day, and they could hear these sounds of these overstressed uh, airplane motors uh, off in the distance, getting closer really quickly. And his mom said, Noel, get in the house. And he said, no, mom, I wanna watch. <laughs> anyway, it's just, wow, and this was just, this incredible tableau came rocketing over the trees. It was a Messerschmitt uh, 109, ME 109, and uh, it was trailing smoke from the cowling, and uh, one of its wheels was down, and right behind it was a hurricane, and uh, it was just blasting the crap out of there. There pieces of junk flying off the Messerschmitt, and they just went flang, and they just, just flew by, just flashed by, went over the trees the other side of the estate, and then there's this huge explosion, a massive ball of orange flame, black smoke, and also he was just standing there, just transfixed, and then the, he saw the hurricane do this huge loop up in the sky, and he did a victory roll. And then he came back down and flew right by Noel again, and as, he, as the pilot flew by, he just looked down at him and he went... Oh. <laughs> it's like the coolest thing ever. <laughs> and we're sitting on this balcony, and he's, he's, he's got this martini in his hand, and he's talk, telling me about this. He says, you know, I think, I think on balance, you know, with all the things I've done over the years, I think that was probably the best day of my life, you know? <laughs> the only way it could have been better is if the pilot had come down and given me a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is a little song of gratitude, a little song of thanksgiving uh, about my house in Nova Scotia. It needs a puppy. <laughs> Well, it's a gift to me this waking In the hours before the sunrise It's a gift to me this light That gilts the waves across the bay It's a gift to me the silence that's 
old house in the morning. I watch the sky and the weather, and I begin another day. It's a gift to me, these raucous gulls that wheel outside my window. I watch the sun climb higher and set to fire the morning dew. Small boats outside my window reflect their colors to the water. I got a gypsy caravans, bright yellow, red, and blue. There's a young boy tossing pebbles in a tide pool in the channel. There's an old dog on an errand on his way toward the town. I hear the voices of my neighbors. I see a sailor pass the island. These broken roads from sunrise to evening. I knew each stone and tree that final mile up to the hill. Starlight through the clouds, the dark trees on the horizon. Celebrate and wind smoke, I remember also. Shadows staring at his own reflection. There's a brown trout in the shallows of the lake behind the hill. And he waits wide eyed and silent and cold in tea brown water. He's like my heart. Before I knew you, though, cold and dark and still. Burning down the far horizon To the east the fountain rises Past the steeple on the hill On this day that I've been given To walk and watch and wonder Night falls upon the little town The stars are bright and chill It's a gift to me these stars That circle slowly around the rooftops I turn my face to skyward to breathe in their ancient light. Long years hover around me as I stand there in the darkness. Night wind rises up and stirs the grass and whispers past me in the night. It's a gift to me the sun and the storm, the sky and the wind and water. Harbor town that opens to a sea of endless blue. As the sky grows bright above me, my cup is running over. Everything I have before me, love, I give it all.
sing. I'm gonna bombard you with a line of choruses now.
I'll try it. 
Salubrious. Uh, I, he was doing a benefit for the ARC uh, Folk Club in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and uh, I was I was delegated that morning to uh, man the phones to uh, to because there was a lot of you know a lot of organization and the people who ran the club they, they were going off to, to pick Pete up at the airport. Anyway, it was he was doing a, it was a big room, it's a five thousand seat room, and uh, <clears throat> so I was I figured I could probably take down messages and drink beer at the same time. <laughs> so the phone ring, you know, hello, the Ark, can I help you? And you know, they'd have some, you know, so I just, you know, was having a nice time. Anyway, the phone rings, hello, the Ark, can I help you? Hi, is uh, Pete Seeger there, please? I said, no, he's not here right now. Can I take a message for you? They said, yeah, it's Ralph Nader calling. <laughs> Excuse me? It's Ralph Nader. Ha, you're right. I hung up. <laughs> so 30 seconds later, the phone rings. Hi, the Ark, can I help you? Yeah, is, uh, is, is Pete Seeger there, please? You sound familiar, who is this? It's Ralph Nader. I said, yeah, right, I'm the Queen of England. Bam, I hung up. About a minute later, the phone rings again. Uh, can I speak to somebody else? <laughs> I said, listen, pal, you know, we got, we're busy people here, you know, Pete Seeger's coming in to do this benefit concert, you know, There's, you know, we're just having to organize a whole lot of stuff, you know, Pete's doing it out of the goodness of his own heart, you know, we don't have time for wankers like you, so just fuck off, bam! <laughs> 30 seconds later, the back door opens, Pete comes in with his banjo on his shoulder, lopes over to me, shakes my hand, says, hi, I'm Pete. Has Ralph Nader called yet? <laughs> So, uh, about a year and a half later, my brother Stan and I are at the Philadelphia Folk Festival, and it's typical Philly Folk Festival weather. It uh, rained for two weeks before the festival, and then it went up to 185 degrees. <laughs> and then the clouds boiled up, lightning struck, the clouds came down, you know, the rain came down again, and you know, just hurricanes and tornadoes and dead cattle falling out of the sky, and just, just plagues of lice and frogs and rivers of blood. You know, it's just, you know, it's folk festival season in Pennsylvania. <laughs> So Stan and I are sitting there, and we're just we're just watching this wreckage, you know. And there's just just mud everywhere, and people struggling through, and they're looking for the kids under tarps and stuff. <laughs> 180 degrees already in the shade, and, and we're just it's 10 o'clock in the morning. Stan's having a cigarette and a coffee. I'm having a brandy and a coffee. And in the midst of all this squalor, is this tall figure in a yellow slicker. He's got a green plastic garbage bag and a stick. He's picking up. Crash. I said, who the hell's that in this weather? Stan's looking, he says, oh my god, it's Pete Seeger. <laughs> I mean, everybody else is just trying to survive or, or trying to get drunk, right? You know, just, there's Pete. This is the guy that stood with Paul Robeson, risked his life for Paul Robeson. This is the guy that traveled with Woody. This is the guy who wrote all those amazing songs. You know, he stood up to McCarthy. He did all those things. If he'd done one single one of those things in his whole life, it would have been an epic life. And here he was picking up trash, other people's trash. We're just sitting there, 
And finally Stan gets up and he goes up to the back of the van and he gets out a couple of green plastic garbage bags. He hands them to me and he slams the door shut and he says, all right, come on. <laughs> guys like him just make the rest of us look bad. <laughs> so, Michael Oh, yeah.